Well, everybody, I would say everybody watches a lot of sports in here, right? Like, everybody watches at least one little thing, you know, one little highlight, basketball, baseball, tennis, soccer, hockey, whatever it is, you know, you watch it, right? So, you know, people would consider the American sports to be baseball. You know, it's like the oldest sport out there. Um, it's been broadcast on many networks, first on radio, then on television. Um, but I think there should be a replacement to the new American sport now. Um, personally, I know I play, like, you know, a variety of sports. I play tennis competitively, I play soccer competitively. I mean, I was you know, not, but still. Um, <laughs> again, I, I said I played six years of baseball. I actually got recruited to play basketball freshman year in high school. Um, so I, I played my little range of sports, so I feel like I have the basis to say what I'm going to say. I think um, football, I know it sounds great, yes, I'm going to play golf, I'm going to play the best sport, but I think football should be the new American sport just because. Um, Oh, because because not only do you have to go through mental toughness, you have to uh, endure the physical brutality. Um, you have to basically recruit the best top athletes the nation has to offer, as the as the biggest industry yet to man today or in America today. You know, America just speaking for America, not the world. Everybody knows soccer rules that category. I'm just speaking for America. Um, the physical brutality is more enduring than any other sport. Yes, some say, you know, all sports has its ups and downs because of physical athleticism. Um, you know, I can actually give respect to hockey because I can never do that. I actually like my teeth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> soccer, <laughs> I, give, I, give, I, give up, I give it up to soccer because, you know, they got a bang their head. It's hard, ball, um, basketball, no friends. Um, <laughs> baseball, I mean, you got a very good run around when you run about the pyramid. I mean, how much of a brutality can that be? Um, uh, tennis, I mean, hitting the 127 mile per hour ball is hard, but I mean, unless it hits you, there's really no, nothing there. Um, so, football actually takes in most physical brutality, not only because we're hitting each other, because we're hitting with so many parts of our bodies constantly. Over and over again, um, you know, going from the head, you know, that's, we have helmets, they're meant to protect from still be concussions, and even some dudes, it's a rare occasion, you go up to like comas and everything. But, um, oh yeah, um, but there's a reason why in, in the league, in the National Football League, in the league of the professional sport, why. Football players, on average, retire at the age of 25, 26 years old. Because their bodies can't have it anymore. Yes, they're still young, but their bodies can't have it anymore, even after like two, three years of just hitting with other players. Um, you know, baseball players usually retire around 38, 40 years old. Soccer players, I have absolutely no clue. Um, <laughs> tennis players, they can play forever. Um, they can play until they're I heard, I think our research is do that play the team was 52. Um, so, that, I mean, so you can actually see which sport takes in the most physical brutality just because how young they have to retire and their bodies can't handle the sport anymore. Um, you know, that this, this will mainly require the top athletes to be able to handle all this physical brutality. Which is like being in American sport will require the best of everything, including the best top athletes. You know, we range in multiple sizes. I'm actually quite small to be playing the position I play, which is the most tackle, which I've heard from too many coaches. Um, you know, there is a such thing as being too big to play football, <laughs> um, there is such thing as being too small to play football. Um, but, you know, you have a range. Of type of athletes, we test from agility to strength to conditioning to you know measurements, height, weight, length of arms, three feet, um, just to see what type of specimen these coaches can get to their not only to colleges but to leagues also. 
According to state claim environmental broadcasting cable messaging, um, according to the New York Times, like, I'm sorry, universities use money from the general fund to lavish their athletic facilities to bring in the best athletes to compete and in return bring in fans from the stadium. Which means they're basically bringing in the best athletes to compete at the, the highest level they can in college to bring in fans to watch them, you know, to watch them play. So it's to watch them play. You know, you lost in college football, it's really high if you have 72,000, 80,000 people in the stands watching you. Um, and not to mention if it's on TV, you have another about 2 million people watching it on TV, just on TV. So, um, you know, there are, um, you know, when it comes to universities, there is a drawback. <laughs> there is a drawback when it comes to um, different sports, you know, art, for example, Duke University is not very well known for its football, it's actually well known for its basketball. Um, again, for Notre Dame, you know, they have other sports where they're, they have other sports where it establishes just as much as football, like Syracuse is the cross team inspired the biggest team I've ever, ever seen in the United nation. Um, you know, but, they, but football is still, Still requires the best athletes. I can almost guarantee, almost guarantee you that if you take a football to play and put it in the other sport, we, we <laughs> can probably um, excel in that sport. Unless it's soccer, I can't do that much. Um. Um. Oh. But, you know, it's though it, you know, it requires the best athletes. Um, it has drawn in the most attention to the sport also, innovation. Uh, football has become the largest sports industry, but it still suffers from some litigations. Um, you know, we're the most, wa most watched sport on TV now. Of course, everybody knows about the Super Bowl, you know, for football. Yes, everyone watches the different commercials, but um, it's actually a quite interesting fact that um, more than 35 million people in the day off. Oh, according to the state of King Broadcasting Cable Magazine, more than 35 million people in the nation watch the Super Bowl chess for, for the game. Not to mention the other people who watch the chess for the commercials. Um, according to the same source, um, half, half, of that, half of those people, around 15 million people, watch college football games or average every Saturday. So you can kind of see how every week for four months straight, people are watching football just nonstop. And not to mention that football is the only sport that is discussed year round. Yes, you know, even during other seasons, it may not be good, like the lockouts, such as the lockout, but it's always talked about. Like you would you could always go on sports in the East Bay, whichever channel you want to go on to. There is something about football or football players probably doing something stupid, doing something good. So, so. like I said, um, the conclusion being, you know, there should be a replacement in the American sport, uh, in the American sport, I'm sorry, uh, for football, because, you know, it takes in the most of mentality. Uh, you know, we require the best athletes, and it's the largest, it's the largest growing industry in the nation thus far. Um, so, if, we were, if football were to run out in America, uh, what sport would we result to watching in, 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 in its replacement? Sorry. <laughs> Drake, what did you think? Not here. Oh, Drake's not here? Well, that makes it hard for him to have an opinion then, doesn't it? I'll have an opinion for you in just a second.